You all right? That was a nasty bump you took. Me and Halo 3 sat by your hospital bed all night, but I'm glad you're feeling better. Oh, what? Did you forget that you were married to the personification of Halo 3? It's part of a contrivance for the opening of a YouTube video? Well, that's okay. I can catch you up on things till your memories of last night come back. Alright, so it's the holiday season, or more just the tail end of it. And you, you lucky bitch, have been married to your loving husband, Halo 3, for about a few months. Either way, we're heading over to his dad's place, because everyone's meeting up there for New Year's. Y'all are bringing a dish, of course, and I'm there too, because I fucking refuse to fly home during the holidays with no car, only some of my computers, having to play grateful guests with my extended- <laughs> Right, this is about you two. <clears throat> so, we pull up, and Granddaddy Halo 1 meets us at the door. You can kinda tell he's still a real one after all this time. He's been through some shit, you could tell. Done hard mods, still working, can't retire yet cause the game still need him. Uh, he's a real player even though he's past the stepping days. Your man told me about how he was the first to like, really do it. He had his name in the papers, was a sharp dresser, making the other niggas bite his style, but like, worse for years. He still keeps the headlines of all that up in his office, and you know, them kids of his, tend to get him talking mostly about his glory days and the wild shit they did. The band practically invented how kids Fortnite with their game controllers nowadays. Not to mention being iconic in his music, looks, stories, just about everything. Legitimately, some don't paint pictures, they just trace him. He essentially raised and wrote the book for Halos 2 and 3, despite their age gap and despite him being a single parent, but you can really tell he did his best. All his kids love him, and even the ones that didn't come from him still call him Granddaddy. He was against having the others call him that for a while, but he's since warmed up to it now that he's got multiple generations of kids that don't even look like him. A very, they don't make him like me anymore type. And from what I know about him, he's right. Your man looks up to him all the time and plans on raising your kids better than Halo 1 ever did. Yeah, I have a shotgun. <laughs> Let me prove it. Sorry, when you have kids. Y'all better make me the godparent. Next up was your brother-in-law, Halo 2, coming in after work in the kitchen and the house tour. Oh, why isn't Halo 2 Halo 3's dad? I'm not the person to ask that. Now, Halo 2, this man is wild. Still thinks he's out there on the streets working hard. Keep strapped, like dual wielding guns. Who the fuck does that at the party? He talks big about how he did it even bigger than granddad and how he redefine the game and all this shit. Uh, a bit much for me, but he promises he got people in the streets who know what he bout. I mean, he was on you for a while, but you knew that he got some problems. Namely, he didn't finish school, has ambitions about doing a lot, but usually has to pull back and cut things a lot. Cable, I'm going to cut it. The nigga got exploited or tricked regularly. Always got his name in somebody's mouth or someone else's name in his. He constantly talks shit like he invented that when you know my cousin John did. Plus, he's a bit abrasive, kind of just disrespectful physically and verbally. He has some other girls and guys riding his shit for a while, but they've been cutting back. But you know what? I don't think anybody can blame him. He had to follow up Halo 1, which is crazy to even imagine the pressure of. Despite it all, he did things his way and made his own waves. I know no one else really does that dual wielding shit or jumping on the moving vehicles like his jackass. I mean, he was the first to do it. Even your man does it now. He's a little competitive for what he'd be trying to do, but nobody can really say he's hateable. Plus he married that other guy, Arby, Arby's? I don't know if he got the schmeet or not, but they cute together. Plus I know your man was seeing him before you, so there must be something since Arby and three seem to be cool after all of it. Two still gets invited to hang out, cause he's still got some music skills, but kinda everybody in the family does. Plus he's funny as hell when he's drunk, just because of how serious he tries to be when compared to Halo 1. What? I'm pretty sure, let me guess, you have a MySpace that says you're hot, and you're some fat bitch, right? No, I don't have a MySpace. You know, I'm getting a little parched from all this talking. Uh, Halo 3, you mind grabbing me a drink? Yeah, I get you, I get it. Just like, grab a Mountain Dew or something for me. I know it's your favorite. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, well, we're kind of going in order from oldest to youngest, so uh, why don't we keep with that? 
Like, do I even need to tell you about your man? There's a lady in my head who calls me Stud Muffin. Somehow the hype for your man to make his debut was even bigger. Like, people used to line up in Times Square as just laying on the ground. Which isn't that hard to believe since he was dropping demo tapes ahead of his debut. He even dropped tools for people to make their own creations just like him. He ended up getting people to like Arby even. Did he ever do a food deal with Arby's? Well, that's money left on the table. Even now, I bump his shit comfortably and on the regular. Hell, they even put this motherfucker in the soda. I'll admit, there's some shortcomings in the story he told, especially when it came to Cortana. And those little gadgets he carries around, his equipment, yeah, no, that shit's dumb. I never liked it. Ultimately, your man is a goddamn Adonis, and shit, I'm not even into men like that, but if he pulled me in the bathroom, he'd be making every face on those who getting the best head memes. One thing I gotta ask, though, what is the family obsession with the flood? Like, literally all of them never shut the fuck up about... Oh, hey, you give me a Snickers, too? We kept touring around the house and ran an ODST setting up gifts for the little ones. And no one asked him to, but you know, he's kind of just that way. Overall, he's okay. I could tell he was the stepbrother's second one though. Quiet, shy, he did some things that were obviously taken from the other side of the family, even if the rest of this side doesn't talk about him much. He's around your man's age, but like a little bit younger. And he has his own kids already. Just like the rest of them, he was given the spotlight to shine. And having to follow up Halo 3 wasn't gonna be easy, so he didn't. Instead, his claim to fame was more like, you know, kind of like watching the Animatrix than the main trilogy. A collection of short stories with a through line that carried the context. I remember not liking it at first, especially since this was just a bigger production and swell around it like 3, but on reflection, most people kind of agree he did pretty good for himself. Especially when you look at the competition going on around that time. Some people still dog on him, but he's gained some diehard fans even after he dipped out of the spotlight. I do remember him caring a little bit too much around lore and mise en scene. Yeah? Well, here I am. I don't know. I don't speak French bread. I don't even play their games. And you do not look at me like ODST ain't trying really hard to be arts. Ultimately, a bit snobby, but when you get past the legacy everyone else set up for him, he's fun to be around in his own way. Oh, and his taste in music is low-key the best out of the family, but don't tell him I said that. Plus, that firefight game he came up with is actually pretty fun. After a bit of talking, Reach walks in, playing some alien ant farm sounding ass music over her phone speaker. I know it took me a while to realize it, but this girl is twinsies with ODST. At first I didn't see it, but seeing them stand next to each other, it's super obvious. She's in a rebellious phase, which makes sense since she's 13. Oh, sorry, I meant that she put out her rebellious contribution to the family tree 13 years ago, and the bitch still ain't over it. She doesn't really know as much about what the family is known for or why they do what they do, so she tried doing her own thing. Like one of those celebrity kids that gets the spotlight way too early for their own good. She's fun to be around though, but she started getting way too serious about what her legacy is going to be. And to be honest, it kind of ruined some of Halo 1's stories for me, especially if I think about Reach. Oh, I know I didn't bring this up before, but when 3 started swinging his equipment around, everyone after him started doing it. Reach got convinced that she should just try it and she made it her whole personality. Then took that and added these armor abilities, which just feel like, you can copy my paper, but change your answers a bit so it doesn't look like you cheated off me. And I think that's the problem with the twins in general. Both of their stories rely on either adding something to the beginning or adding something to the end of a story that already had a great beginning and end already. Don't get me wrong, I think Reach is pretty all right. She was born at a rough time in the family and she's got her rough edges, but she's the last of Halo 1's main bloodline and a lot of people softened up looking back on her. And I mean, you and I like her better from the jump than the next kid we ran into. So remember when we talked about the adopted kids to the Halo family? No, that's okay, cause that only really matters now. I'm gonna use a metaphor. Halo 4 is like in a family of luchadors that share the same mask and in-ring persona, has the last kid completely missed the point of their legacy. That lucha mask, it's called the Master Chief. 
and Halo 4 did not want to deal with the Master Chief. Okay, so Granddad used to tell a story about these weird ancient alien history channel bullshits called Forerunners. When it came to 4 making their mark in the family legacy, they tried turning it into a main pillar of the story, which was an awful idea. Kind of like when Desmond tried to be his own main character. No family guy cut away. All right. He constantly goes on about Prometheans and other thesaurus shit that sound like my eighth grade writing assignments. I think that has to do with him realizing that using the same thing one, two, and three kept using was tired by the time it was his turn. That's probably because he's been talking to the fucking book kids. God. Main thing that everyone talks about with him though is having Cortana get turned into a desktop stripper. Thanks to Uncle Microsoft for that. Like, I get four really likes her and so does five in their own way, but we'll get to that. The obsession four has with this Discord kitten is a bit much though. Oh, and he tried to kill her off so no one else could have her? Like, dude, the fuck? He's cool to game with though, at least I had fun with him. Although you can tell that being the last one to go to the same school as three Reach and the rest definitely fucked him up though. Uh, too bad Uncle Microsoft wouldn't pay to get him out of there or wait a year. Speaking of which, you can point out issues here, there, and all over. But this is a sign that Uncle Microsoft inflated his ego way too much and things just fell through. Four just kind of wants to do his own thing, but everyone before him plus Uncle Microsoft expected him to do something with what everyone else had been carrying so far. So even though Reach is a bit of a rebel, everyone kind of just forgets about Four. You know, instead of the one everyone actually wants to forget about. Okay, alright, sorry, that was a bit pointed and mean. But hear me out on this one. The biggest kid at the children's table has to be Halo 5. I know that people are apparently acting like the things she made were underappreciated, but I think it's a bit of some cope. She keeps talking about her friend Locke and how he's so cool and dreamy and oh, did I mention how he's imaginary? I don't care to ask, but I think John Locke is one of those book kid things but I don't know anybody that actually pays that much attention to them. So Five never did the best in school, especially in math. Probably explains why she was bad with fractions and sharing things with others. She did like exploring a lot as a little tyke, so having like little hidden notes around the house is nice. Taking from ODST, I think everyone having things their own way, like a Burger King kid, works. Although that just sounds like another reason for your older brother to beat your ass and steal your kid's toy. Speaking of toys, am I the only one that feels weird about Chief having friends? He's supposed to be like mostly a blank slate and if he does have any, it should be like Cortana? Oh, she's dead. Johnson? Dead. Keys? Dead. Keys' daughter? Is she dead? Point is, Chief doesn't really have a lot of time to build meaningful relationships, so him having a squad that goes against the military with him is wild to me. Same deal with why the Warden Eternal? Who the fuck is he? I swear to God, if you bring up the books, I'm sending you back out of here. But the book kids came up with why Chief needs to chase down his not dead, not girlfriend too. Too bad that's the majority of his personality now. Oh, and that's the goofy ass reason why Five's obsessed with her Locke character. He's hunting the Master Chief. It's just like that Catcher Friedman episode of the Boondocks. You see that nigga flip from tree to tree like on some old Tarzan shit? Wait, 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 bring it back. I gotta see that key. I'll be happy. Her whole story feels kind of like a CW show. Actually, isn't John Locke the name of the bald guy on Lost? Did she just fall asleep watching Lost? Whatever. The big twist was Cortana didn't commit KYS. She is alive, but evil. This feels like Five gave up on what everyone before her was doing. Like, Four wasn't great, but it went from, I'm gonna tell the story I want to, even if the characters don't make sense, to, I had 20 minutes left on an exam, and this is what I wrote down to get a minimum score. Instead, she moved the story to fucking multiplayer? No, unacceptable. I'm sorry, fanfic net submissions are not valid here. Especially since you're gonna beg for money from the readers to get more of the story no one likes. Oh god, I reminded them of how fanfic.net hit the nurse call button. I think they're going under. Hey, you there? You passed out listening to me talk about the last chance for a franchise to course correct with the current storyline to become anything interesting. 
Anyway, the doc came by and she said that visiting hours end in a few. So I got a couple more minutes to wrap up the story. And by that, I mean I forgot the narrative and I'm just going to cover the remaining ones I can remember. Just fine. But they are that kid who plays Warhammer and nothing else. People only talk about them to prove a point or don't remember the last time that they actually played it all the way through. Remember, Halo 1 almost turned out like these guys, being the nerdy kid with hundreds of figurines. I mostly feel bad for them because the family doesn't want to help them when, you know, they were really ready to make their contributions to the legacy, despite most people I know being into that kind of thing. I'm not gonna lie, I forgot these two were two separate kids. The tactical kids that thought Uncle Microsoft was gonna adopt them, but realize that low budget and spinoff are two phrases that Unc likes to hear but not to see. Ultimately, something perfect for a handheld. Maybe even something for like the Nintendo Switch. Honestly, too cool for their own good. While it's fun to see what they came up with and the moment to moment action is something worth watching, actually hanging out past the good parts just kind of make you feel drained and not just physically, but financially. Like, I've never seen the machine they made anywhere for less than a dollar a play, and you got me fucked up if you think I'm spending that on a cabinet that's not Time Crisis 2. There's like over 20 of them? And I remember reading the first two saying, this is all right. Then realizing the more backstory about Halo 1 I learned, the more I absolutely could not care. There's like, 12 booktubers that cover those in detail and I refuse to watch anything about them. Not the booktubers, the books. Someone will leave an angry comment about why I'm missing out and how they influence Master Chief's experiencing testicular torsion. I don't know. The Destinies are like those kids that got really popular on Vine or early YouTube and then while you were there in the moment, you can remember being excited, wanting to see them succeed, and after about a month, you stopped paying attention to them. Like, they kept going on for, like, a while. Shit, one of them's still going. And I'm not convinced that one isn't just two, because I've never seen them both in a room at the same time. Two seems like they're also just trying to find the next thing to make people care about them for a little while longer. And while I do want to see whatever this final shape thing that they keep saying is gonna be the big finale, someone is gonna have to buy it for me or tell me the story cause I'm not investing more into a glorified half MMO. I'd rather shit in my hands and clap. Marathon is the real one that everyone knows about now ever since Mandalore dug up those mummified corpses and put them on display. While I'm aware that there are influences and connections between them and the Halo family, the stories the Halo family tells are so standalone complex that you won't get more than a moment where you're Leonardo DiCaprio snapping your fingers at the TV from playing Marathon or anything like that. You know what? I think that's pretty cool. This new thing that claims it's Marathon though? No, that's not Marathon, so I don't care to talk about it. And you're better off too. Oh, what about the cousin from Paramount? Well, he has trouble emoting. He doesn't want to wear the helmet like everyone else did. Plus, I heard he was dropped on his head. What? Being honest, I genuinely heard that. Literally everyone in your family clowns him. Even... Halo Infinite is the gifted kid that burned out immediately after high school and doesn't have any current aspiration or goals. Once in a while, they get some money and flex, but they lose it in like a month. Kind of like an episode of Trailer Park Boys. Julian. Ultimately, they doubled down on what Five did for some dumb fucking reason. A story that nobody cares about that's really just Groundhog Day with everyone aware that it's Groundhog Day. Except Cortana, because it's not Cortana. It just looks like her, and she's quirky, and she likes Chief a lot like Cortana did. And Chief has to go, this isn't weird at all because I kind of dated your mom. But not Cortana goes, who's my mom? I don't know anything prior to these recent events. Kind of like the writers want me to do everything in their power to not acknowledge that this franchise is suffering. But Master Chief is literally Uncle Microsoft's brand now, so it'll be a cold day in hell before we throw any of that away. And Chief looks slowly at the camera like it's a sitcom where he gets to break the fourth wall and pray for death. Too much? Sorry. I've been told it's a cycle in the Halo family. Like, people already try to act like 4's take was pretty good, and I've already seen the narrative around 5's being apologized? Apologistized? Whatever the word for having apologists for a thing beginning to become commonplace is. 
By the way, it's been a long day for you. Hopefully the doc says you can go home soon. You know, you're lucky to have a loving husband like Halo 3. Especially after everyone ignored that whole dimensional merge thing back a few years ago. Huh, how naive we all were. By the way, it's late and my Uber is going to be here in a few sec. Oh, I forgot to talk about great grandma Oni. Yo, she is such a bad bitch. She is such a bad bitch though. I'm actually going out with her for drinks tonight, so bye.